I'm going to expose our best selling product. This product has made us $483,000 in profit in the past 12 months. Let me show you our five step process to how we built a $65 million a year Amazon business. So the first step is to find suppliers. Let me show you this exact product that we're talking about. You All need right, a boost? Here we go. No, I don't need a boost. <laughs> Let's take a look. What do we got here? You always carry around a pocket knife. <laughs> That's why they don't let you in airports. Here we go. This product right here, $483,000 in gross profit. Not sales, profit. And this is exactly how you're gonna find a supplier that sells a product just like this that can change your life. On the back of every single product is a manufacturer or a distributor. This one says distributed by Selena Naturally. So you can hop on your phone, call up Selena Naturally and see if there's an opportunity to open a direct account with this company. If that is not an available option, you can ask them who their distributors are. The companies that they sell to that distribute nationally for retail customers to buy this product. Another opportunity would be for you to search it, search online. First go to their website, on the brand's website, it might have the distributors that they work with directly. You could start reaching out to them right away or just do a simple search online to find out who distributes Selena Naturally, who distributes Celtic Salt, get on the phone, lock that account in. So now we're actually gonna go upstairs into my office and show you the steps we use to research this product to make sure that it crushes. So step two is researching the product. I wanna show you proof that we've made as much money as we told you we have. So check this out. So this is the product that we were talking about. We've sold this product on a ton of different listings and variations in all different sizes. This variation, right now it's listed at 1080. So there's not much profit to be had there. But when we were selling it, we were selling it right around 15, 15.99 with a cost of goods of $4. That left us with $5.66 in profit on every single unit we sold. Now check this out. When we look at how many units this is selling a month, it's selling 50,000 units a month. So let's break down the math on that. A listing that's doing 50,000 units in sales with a $5 profit, even if you are able to capture the buy box 10% of the time, meaning that your storefront is displayed as the one that's selling the product 10% of the time during the month, that's $25,000 in profit per month. And keep in mind, this is just one of thousands of products that we sell on Amazon. So now we're gonna move into step three, which is ordering and prepping the product. We've trained our buyers over the years to look at the analytics the same way Eric just did and make these smart, calculated decisions. There's always risk in business, but based on what the numbers we're seeing, it's a no-brainer to us, especially with the experience that our buyers have. They would then reach out to their point of contact from their suppliers, order this product, and at that point, once the product arrives, arrives at our facility, we're gonna go prep that product. This is all part of step three. Receiving the product, bringing it to the stations, and prepping it. It's important to note that the steps that we're showing you, it doesn't matter if you're in a facility or a garage. We were doing these same five steps when we were operating our business out of a basement. So it always depends on what product you're doing when it comes to prepping. Amazon will provide you some specific requirements. Otherwise, you may have your own requirements if you want to ensure that the product doesn't become damaged because that would be your responsibility and you pay for it. One of the examples of additional prep requirements if you're doing a multi-pack. Matter of fact, Eric, do you mind grabbing a poly bag and Got we'll show you, him? Bro. While he's going to grab the poly bag, I'm going to go ahead and start printing the labels. So the first thing we need is our FN SKU label. That's going to go over to physical product and the purpose of that is it's a unique ID that's not only gonna track the product, but it's also connected to my seller name and my seller account to ensure when my product gets to Amazon and then ends up in the consumer's hands, I get paid for it. So here's the FN SKU label. It has an expiration on it because this is a consumable product grocery. So we have to ensure it has the expiration. And we just put that on there. And we're gonna repeat this process for all 12 of these. Once these are completely labeled, every single one of them, we just put them back in this box. We seal the box. We grab our box label, place it on top of this box, and we're done. We're ready to either send this out SPD, meaning we're gonna ship it by UPS or DHL, or we're gonna be 
sending this out LTL or full truckload directly to an Amazon warehouse. <laughs> I cannot believe how long <laughs> this is taking me. You can tell I've spent too much time in an office. <laughs> I cannot. This is childproof, guys. This is, unfortunately, you have to be. <laughs> what is going on? You need a hand, Rob? Come on, let me I go. Get, I, the struggle is real when you don't have nails. Yeah, bro. I got those bags, by the way. Awesome. And so this is what the finished product would look like. Eric, can you show them how to do a multi-pack poly bag? Yeah, absolutely. So if this was being sold as a two-pack, the process would be similar. You definitely want to face the product so they're covering the UPC, so there's no scannable UPC. And then you have two options, or really three options. I don't have the third one here as far as bags you can put them in. This is a standard poly bag. This is a poly bag with a Ziploc on the top. And then there's self-adhesive poly bags that have tape at the top where you fold it over. But for this example, you would simply fold it up like this. You throw a piece of tape on it right here. Now, every single product that's in a poly bag and has an opening of five inches or greater, which this one does, it's probably about eight inches, it requires a warning risk of suffocation label for children and infants. So this has to be applied on this product. And additionally, because it's a multi-pack, we are going to add a do not separate label to this product. So when it is received at Amazon's fulfillment center, they know not to cut open this poly bag and that this product is sold as one set. Now, to optimize your efficiency, they make labels that have warning and do not separate labels on one label. They also make bags with warning risk of suffocation labels on them. So step number four is shipping the product. You'll take your fully FN skewed items and put them back in the box. You would seal this box with a piece of tape. You would throw your box label on the outside of the box so Amazon knows what's in this package. Or shipping label. Shipping label oh, if you're doing SPD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Box so label depends. or shipping label, yeah. And then you have a few different options to get this to Amazon. In our case, we send pallets. So we would simply add this box to a pallet to make it organized. So I'd probably put it over here, assuming that there's gonna be hundreds of other boxes on top of this pallet. And then when this pallet is full and 72 inches high, we would move the next cases over to a new pallet. And the reason Eric calls it full is because Amazon's requirements are a pallet can't be 72 inches or higher off of the ground, and a pallet can't weigh more than 1,500 pounds when you're shipping that pallet to Amazon. Now, the other method of getting this to Amazon would be using SPD, which Sebastian touched on earlier, small parcel delivery, where you would actually either take this to a USPS or a UPS shipping location and give it to the provider to ship to Amazon, or you could schedule a pickup right at your home or your warehouse or your storage facility, wherever you're operating from, and they would come pick this product up and deliver it to Amazon for you. And honestly, I know this is a lot of information. It could be overwhelming, especially when we're talking about warehouse facilities and operations, and you might just be getting started. And for you, all it is is one single product that you're packaging and then shipping directly to the consumer. And that's even easier. You can drop that off at your local UPS or your local post office. But for us, we're palletizing it and it's going to go right to Amazon's facilities. And the benefit for us is that we've built out teams so we don't actually have to handle this. I mean, you saw my struggle with the labels. You know, it's not an easy process, but once you understand it, it becomes seamless. So just to recap, there's three different methods to shipping. When you first start, you're going to be sending these products through USPS or UPS to get delivered to Amazon. As you grow, you're gonna to wanna to free up more of your time, so you may leverage a prep center so they can handle the prepping, packaging, and shipping of these items. And then, once you build an established business, you'll probably need a warehouse like this. And in this facility, we repeat that process that we just showed you over 12,000 times every single day and send full truckloads directly to Amazon right out of these bay doors. Yeah, we get about three to four different truckloads coming in and out every single day out of our facility. So as Eric mentioned, these are our four dock doors and we're shipping out full truckloads and receiving full truckloads every single day, five days a week. So this seems like a lot of work and it can absolutely be overwhelming. So the next question is, how do we track all of the products that we send to Amazon? And that's step number five. And the reason we track this, all of this, all the different processes and systems we have is because at the end 
end of the day, for us, it's not about just sales. Sales is nice, it, those orange bars are so pretty. A lot of people on social media like to talk about them, but for us, at the end of the day, it's about profits. We need to be bringing in money to feed our employees, to take care of them, to take care of all the family members that are part of this business, and to take care of ourselves. That comes down to operations, procedures, automations, and systems. So some of the data points we're looking at for tracking these products are return rates. What percentage of customers are returning these items? Does the percentage of customers returning these items outweigh the profitability of the item? Also, what is the average profit per sale? Are we selling a lot of units? Is the profit a dollar? Is the average profit $5? There's a huge difference between those two numbers. Additionally, we are tracking the NCX score, negative customer experience. Are customers complaining about the items that we're selling? Are they leaving negative feedback? about the items that we're listing on Amazon because that's also no good for building a legitimate business. And then another aspect of it, because everything at the end of the day comes down to supply and demand. If we see the number of sellers on a listing continuing to increase, but the demand isn't growing, well, we know what's next to happen. The price is gonna drop. So we need to pivot and move effectively. And the reason why we're showing you this product in the first place is because we don't sell it anymore. We analyzed the landscape of the listing and the competition. We made our money, enough money to buy a house, and then we dipped out. We're no longer selling on that listing and we invested money into new inventory. And what happens a lot of the time that we've seen is people get stuck. They don't realize that there's a trend happening and they get stuck with excess inventory with tens of thousands of dollars that they're gonna have to liquidate and lose money on all because they don't have the right systems in place to track and flag those products when they're moving in the wrong direction. So we just showed you how to find suppliers to open accounts with, how to research the inventory, how to order the inventory, prep the inventory, ship the inventory, and then track the sales and the profitability of that inventory. We have tons of free resources and guides that you can download right below this video. And if you're already selling on Amazon and you're looking to build a large business like this, send us a DM on Instagram and we can talk about how we can take your business to the next level. See you in the next video. Love Without it. the finger though. Okay, right, with the I'll finger. Say one more time for <laughs> See you in the next video. <laughs>